The cost of hotel rooms in this city has skyrocketed because one in every five hotels is now operating as a shelter for illegal aliens. My first thought was, that's gotta be happening down in Texas. But you're gonna be shocked at what city it is that's housing these illegals. And I'm gonna tell you why these illegals are heading there in the first place. It's a brilliant plan. My name's Grant Warrington, and I'm a real estate investor who's an expert on my own opinion. And I bring you all the important videos you need to watch, and a few you don't. Check it out. I just had a friend tell me he went to New York City and he couldn't get a decent price hotel room because all the hotels jacked up their rates because there's just about no vacancies because they're housing illegal immigrants in the hotel rooms. I go, dude, there's no way that's happening. Send me some proof, you gotta be bullshitting me. And then he sent me this article, sheltering migrants jacks up costs of New York City hotel rooms. So he was right. The average daily rate of hotel rooms in New York City jumped 8.5% from 2020 to 2023 and remained high through the first few months of 2024 during the conversion of roughly 135 hotels to housing illegals, the New York Times reported. Not one hotel that entered the city's shelter program has returned to its traditional hotel business. Of course not. I'm sure they're making a ton of money by turning these hotels into shelters. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why they're doing it in a minute. Overall, the city is operating with 16,532 fewer hotel rooms for travelers and tourists as the city turned to the hospitality industry to house roughly 65,000 illegal migrants. Now, this video is not about tourists and oh, it's, it, you know, you're having a problem finding a place to stay when you go to New York. Listen, 65,000 illegal migrants is huge. To dump that many people into a city and into a system, how are you gonna pay for all those people? And who's gonna pay for all those people? That is ridiculous. I can't believe that a city can sustain this and you're gonna find out exactly what's happening to the city of New York. But reading this article, I had another question. They keep referring to illegal aliens as illegal migrants. So I wanted to see what changed? Why all of a sudden are we calling everybody an illegal migrant? So the Associated Press did a piece on this back in 2021. U.S. under Biden will no longer call migrants illegal aliens. Okay, well, that explains it. Employees of the two main U.S. immigration enforcement agencies were directed Monday to stop referring to migrants as aliens, a dated term that many people consider offensive. Okay, we can't ever offend anybody in this country, so that's great, right? We gotta make sure no one's offended and let's use some better terminology. Memos issued by Customs and Border Protection as well as Immigration and Customs Enforcement tells employees to use the words non-citizen or migrant. The change reflects guidelines set by the Biden administration, which is reversing many of the anti-immigration policies of former President Donald Trump. That's interesting. So this is 2021. Biden is reversing a lot of the policies. We're going to get into this in a minute and see how that has worked out. Instead of illegal aliens, which was still being used by some government officials in press releases and elsewhere, the employees of CBP and ICE should instead use undocumented non-citizen or undocumented individual according to the memos. I'd love to talk to ICE or Border Patrol and see how they feel about this. But I wanted to know more about this. If they're crossing the border in Texas and California, how the hell are they getting to New York City and why? That's such a long trip. Do they have friends and relatives in New York? Why are so many of them? New York City has taken in 65,000 illegals, so let's find out why. We're here in El Paso, Texas, where thousands of migrants have been entering the country illegally. After they enter the United States, authorities will take them to processing facilities. And then it appears that a lot of them end up here on the streets of downtown El Paso, where they choose which state to go to. We've been asking a lot of them here at the bus station, where are you going? Where are you from? So that's very interesting. They get to choose where they want to go. This all doesn't make a lot of sense to me, right? I, we're going to get to the bottom of it, but how do they get to enter the country illegally and then get to decide where they want to go? Now, I'm all for people coming to this country. I love it. I got a lot of friends 
that have immigrated from other countries and they're extremely successful in this country. I love that and I think that should be something we focus on more. I think we should go to these other countries and tell their doctors, lawyers, or construction workers even, people that can perform any kinds of these jobs that we need here in the United States and we give them a better path to move here. ¿Dónde va? A Chicago. ¿Dónde va? A San Nueva York. ¿Eh? Venezuela. ¿Dónde va? A Denver. Vengo de Venezuela. ¿Dónde vas? Voy a Denver, Colorado. Denver. ¿A dónde viene? ¿A dónde vengo? Este, de Venezuela. De Venezuela. Este, nos vamos a Denver para que nos logren apoyar, ayudar con unos boletos para ir a nuestro destino que es New Jersey. Uh, where are you going? Denver. Denver. And uh, where Tennessee. Tennessee. One thing I noticed, there's a lot of dudes in this video. Let's keep an eye out for that going forward. I'm going to play some other clips and I don't see a lot of families and kids crossing the border. It looks like a lot of guys in their 20s and possibly 30s. Okay, wow. That's Chicago. Washington. Oh, that's where we're from. <laughs> Washington. D.C.? Yeah, we'll see you there. Uh, ¿Dónde vienes? Primero vamos para de Venezuela. De Venezuela. Primero vamos, igual de Venezuela, pero primero vamos a Denver porque allá supuestamente dicen que nos regalan el pasaje cuando uno quiera ir. So it looks like Denver's a big hot spot too. So people get bussed up to Denver and then it appears they get bussed or flown to New York. They get to decide where they want to go, but I think Denver's a hub and then they can go to other places from there is what it sounds like. So let's get back to the hotel situation. How is New York City paying for 65,000 migrants that have just flowed into the city. The New York Times reports that roughly 135 out of the 680 hotels scattered across the city's five boroughs entered the uh, immigration program that allows migrants to be housed in hotels. Now that means fewer beds are available for tourists. You could essentially get a supply demand crunch. The average hotel price for every traveler has jumped eight and a half percent in a year. Average hotel costs right now across the Big Apple, some three hundred dollars so let's get one thing straight these hotels are not just giving these rooms up for free just out of the kindness of their heart right they have to make money i mean they got to make if they have mortgage payments on these they have to make those payments they're paying taxes they have to provide water pay for water they're there to make money right we all know that let's get that right out in the open so why would they decide we're going to now turn this hotel into a sanctuary or a shelter for all these illegal migrants, illegal migrants, not illegal aliens, illegal migrants. Okay. Why would they do that? Because they're probably charging five times more than what an average room would cost because the government or the city's paying the bill. So the city has to make it very appealing for these hotels to do that right so that's what's going on here and that's why these hotels are participating in these programs there's a ton of money to be made and i guarantee in a few years we're going to hear a lot more about this the roosevelt hotel in new york city has become a center point for all of this controversy so let's take a look and see how they operate and how they're doing with this new shelter system they're providing for people it was just over a year ago when the Roosevelt Hotel excuse me, became New York City's intake center for newly arriving migrants. Since then, thousands have passed through from more than 100 different countries. Our Morgan Mackay got an inside look at their operations. It's been dubbed by the city as a new Ellis Island. The Roosevelt Hotel was turned into a migrant arrival center in May 2023 and became the one-stop shop where newly arriving migrants could get information 24-7 about what to do and where to go next. Seems like they're helping a lot of people. They've been doing it for over a year now, but the big problem is who's been paying for this all along? Who's going to continue to pay for it? And what's the end goal? And where does this ever stop? Since its arrival center opened its doors around a year ago, it has welcomed more than 150,000 migrants from 160 different countries. Behind me here, there are warm meals that we serve around the clock 24 seven. 
Dr. Ted Long with Health and Hospitals has been spearheading this operation since its inception. He says once migrants arrive, they are quickly registered. We ask for your name, the size of your family, and give you a wristband so that we know and have line of sight into everybody in the building now. One issue I have with this is there's no ID. They're not taking ID from people. If I fly in a plane, I got to show them my passport, my identification. I have to take my shoes off to fly on that plane to go from Tampa to Detroit, right? They know who I am, they take a picture of me, and they ask me a ton of questions at the airport and search my luggage. What are they doing here? Are they just taking people's names? Please tell me they're doing a little bit more than that. After that, migrants are led to a room that is set up as a healthcare clinic. Every migrant- Ah, that lady doesn't have her mask on. You gotta pull that up. I don't, I don't think they really work anyway, but you should have it up over your nose is screened for any disease they might have contracted along the way, offered medical assistance, screened for depression, and are able to get vaccinated. Looks like mandatory vaccination requirements. City officials say that so far they have administered more than 70,000 vaccines. Enable us to enroll kids in school almost instantly upon when they arrive in New York City. After this, migrants are connected to a case manager who will help them decide next steps. If they want to connect with family or friends in a different state, the city will help them get there. So the city is going to help them move anywhere they want around the country. Who's paying for that? And I got another question. What about all the homeless and homeless veterans that are in New York City? Who's helping them? Keep in mind, these people are here illegally. I understand they fled their country and it's a terrible thing and who wouldn't want to come to the United States? But I don't think all of them are asylum seekers. I think there might be some people that really need this and I understand that and my heart goes out to them, but there's probably people mixed in here who are taking advantage of the system. There always is and the problem is we don't know who's who. If they need a shelter bed, the city will then assign them to a shelter site and help them get started on filing their asylum papers. When the arrival center first opened, some migrants were waiting for days. Now... So we'll place you quickly, typically in a matter of hours, to the site where you're going to sleep that night. One reason why room is opening up faster now is because the city has started to set limits on how long migrants can stay at shelter sites. And starting this week, have started to evict some migrants who have stayed longer than 30 days. That's the problem. When you give people free room and board like that and they have nowhere to go, nowhere to work, what are their other options? They're gonna have to stay there. You've put them in a system that's set up to fail. So now New York City's going, well, we can't pay for them forever. Let's evict them. Now where do they go? And now, whose problem are they? The city would not say how much it costs to keep this facility running every day, but Immigrant Affairs Commissioner Manuel Castro emphasized how this cost should be coming from the federal government. We hope that the federal government does more in support of asylum seekers. Reporting from the Roosevelt Hotel, I'm Morgan McKay, Fox 5 News. I think the city should absolutely have to tell people how much this is costing per individual every single day. They're hiding that information because if that got out, I guarantee people would say this shit has to change. We need to go in another direction. We need to figure something else out. These taxpayers would probably be pretty pissed off if they heard how much money is getting spent out of their pockets. But my next question as a landlord is, what are these people doing to the property? Anytime somebody lives somewhere for free and they don't have any interest or money in the deal, they tend not to care too much about the property. So they're not paying rent, they have no lease, and they're not paying for their hotel rooms daily. So how's the inside of that unit look? We're gonna find out. There are about 680 hotels in New York City. 135 of them are reportedly operated, operating as migrant shelters. One of those hotels is the Rowe Hotel, where Carlos Aralano used to work. Carlos joins me now. T you tell me, how do hotels make money from these migrants? Tell me. Well, they charge, they charge the city, the taxpayer, they charge them double. You know, people think you're just paying for the room, but you're paying for the staff members. You walk into one of these hotels, and depending on how far you get, you can see a table of 10 staff members. But out of those 10 staff members, only two of them are really working. So there's the incentive for the hotel to rent these rooms out as a shelter. 
They're not only getting paid the amount of money for the room, but they're also getting paid for staff members. The other thing you're probably not considering is how do these people eat? Remember, they don't have money, they don't have jobs, so they have to be providing them some type of food and guess what they're doing with that? They're upcharging it. So the taxpayers, again, are probably paying five times what it normally would cost. So that's why these hotels are participating in these programs. But again, what do the rooms look like? What's the condition of these hotels now from the inside? How are they being, I hate to say trashed, but are they in good condition or not? Oh no, they're ruined. They're never gonna be what they once were. Uh, and that's why they're, they, they keep renewing the contracts because they don't want anyone to go in there and see what, what uh, damage they've done to this place long term. Uh, every, every other week there was power out outages at the row on the floor 23. So I used to get, go to work and they would say, you have five floors without le electricity, go figure it out. And we would be without electricity because it would be five floors of illegal of migrants wanting to plug in air fryers into their rooms. So can you and you just do the math, you know, five floors worth of people. There's 5000 people in this hotel spread across 28 floors. You have five floors trying to plug in air fryers. It's going to short circuit the electrical wires. Notice my man caught himself. He said illegals and then said, oh, no, nope, I mean migrants, right? Great job on catching yourself. We don't want to offend anybody. The hotels are in bad shape. We figured that's probably what would happen. And I guarantee you these hotels are becoming shelters with the contract with the city that they're going to pay these hotels to rehab them. And I guarantee that's what's going to happen. These hotels are not going to take these people in without some form of payment in the future to rehab these hotels. So I bet you this city has a ton of money that they're going to have to pay out to these hotels to get them back up to the luxury where they used to be. And I bet nobody's talking about that, but I can guarantee that'll come out in a year or two. There's 135 hotels in New York City, which house migrants. Uh, there are 680 hotels altogether. 135 of them are just for migrants. That's not going to change, is it? Oh, no, because the last thing I've been hearing when I've been now talking to migrants at the border is they tell each other, they coordinate, they tell each other, make sure your, your hearing, your asylum hearing is in New York, because in New York, there's judges who lean a certain way that will give you more time. If you, if you put your court hearing in Texas, you're going to screw yourself over. So they tell each other, leave your court hearing in New York, claim your free hotel once you get there, and then come back to Texas. Because if you do it in Texas, it's not going to go well for you. So they co coordinate with each other, telling each other, go to New York, go to Chicago, go to Denver. So these, this is never, this is not going to stop anytime soon. It's actually a brilliant plan. They go to these asylum cities because they know the judges are going to be leaning on them. And then they're just going to pour back to Texas or wherever else that they have friends and family at. And they know that they're going to be fine after they get that initial court date in one of these asylum cities. So that's the reason they're going to New York. I wondered why they're crossing the border and then trying to find their way all the way up to New York. And that's it. Now we know. But it gets even worse. Now these hotels have figured out we can't house these people forever. And the New York City's not going to want to pay for these people to live in these hotel rooms indefinitely. So they're starting to evict people. Where do people go that have nowhere to go? You promised them that they could come here live in your city, go to work and live the American dream. And you put them up in these hotels. And now all of a sudden you're telling them you got to leave. Check this out. But now a different kind of movement, the migrant crisis taking a toll in midtown Manhattan, dozens of families forced out of their hotel shelter, the 40 families at the Roe Hotel reaching the 60 day limit now imposed on their stay. Another mess for this crisis. I was just Joe Torres outside the Roosevelt Hotel Intake Center in Midtown for us with the latest Joe. 
And Bill, so many of the kids of those 40 migrant families started their day going to school. They left from the row hotel this morning only to come back from school to find parents, mom and dad in line here at the intake center at the Roosevelt Ho School once again. This is a shame and it's a terrible situation. I don't wish this on anyone, but I think if we'd have been tougher on the border and not allowed all these people to enter illegally, we wouldn't be facing problems like this where we have to evict these people and they have nowhere to go. Basically, they're getting evicted out of one hotel and they're just gonna go to the other hotel that's an asylum hotel and try to enter there. Reapplying for a more shelter, an extension, if you will. The city imposed a shelter limit in the 60-day notices to gently push asylum seekers towards more stable housing with family, with friends, to get off the city dime. Well, that happened for some migrant families, but not for others. Marianis Garcia's year-long stay at the Row Hotel in Midtown came to a sudden and abrupt end today. She's been there for a year. That's the problem. As a landlord, the way I see it, when you give people a free place to stay and they have nowhere else to go, what are they going to do? They're going to stay. Let's figure out exactly how much a year, just based on the cost of the hotel, would cost for someone to stay in that hotel room. Let me figure out the math. So at $300 a night times 365 days, that's $109,500 for her to stay in that hotel room for one year. And again, that's just one person and it doesn't account for meals, all the healthcare they provide, and any other service and staff members. After a 60 day notice, the city exercised its shelter limit and evicted the 26 year old and her three handsome boys. It's difficult, but we have to move forward and we give thanks to God and the Rowe Hotel for taking us in. Garcia walked to the Roosevelt Hotel to reapply for shelter, but not everyone was ready to restart the application process. Angel Hernandez, also from Venezuela, will head south to reconnect with a family member in Philadelphia. That's exactly what city leaders designed the shelter limit to do. Move families to more stabilized housing. So the city's happy. He's moving away to Philadelphia with friends or family or somebody, but how do we keep track of him? How do we know where he went? Keep in mind, he's an illegal alien migrant. He's an illegal migrant, right? So how do we know he's doing what he's saying? How do we know he's gonna reappear for a court date? I believe he should have one in his future. I don't know. I hope they're doing a good job of tracking these people. So I'm grateful for New York, said the 36-year-old father of two teenage boys. I'm grateful for the United States, grateful for everything, because the truth is, it's gone well. Many doors were opened for me. This morning, the city controller met face to face with Maria Quero, an evicted asylum seeker who is eight months pregnant and has no idea where she'll rest her head tonight. Brad Lander told reporters he will launch an investigation into the city's shelter policies and protocols. I really don't know what could be more cruel than what the city of New York is doing right now. Now. I agree with them. What they're doing is telling all these people, hey, we're an asylum city. You can come live and stay with us and you can go to work. And then they're telling people, oh, by the way, you can only stay so long and uh, we're going to kick you out and then you're out on the streets. Again, the other thing that bothers me with this, what about veterans? What about homeless people? There's veterans on the street in New York City right now and nobody's offering them a place to stay. And that's a shame. We're all doing this because we want to help people um, and making a plan with Maria so that when she has um, her baby, it could be a healthy baby. Dr. Long there said that he and city staffers spent the last 60 to 90 days working with Maria and or her husband to de develop a housing plan moving forward. However, we talked to the husband this afternoon and he told us the only information he got from the city was this. You have to leave the Rowe Hotel today. This is a sad situation all around. I don't blame anyone for wanting to come to the United States. It's the best country in the world, but we need to be very careful about how we let people enter the country and allowing 4,000 people to enter illegally every single day is wrong.
They need a tougher border policy and this needs to end. Keep in mind, 4,000 people a day is 1,460,000 people illegally a year. Are they coming to your state? Are they coming to your city? I don't know and they won't tell you. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I got a ton more stuff I know you're gonna love. You can check out the next video right here and I'll see you in this video.